We are back on the Rational Boomer podcast. Hopefully your day is going well. It is Saturday. I'm happy to announce that we have a guest, one of the favorites, if not the favorite. You're close with old soul, but they love you, Ed. So Ed is joining us today on the Rational Boomer <laughs> podcast. And I just want to give people a heads up. You know, people who would come to me and say, Mike, you got a cold. It's probably something serious. You're probably dying. I did go to the doctor. It's a <laughs> lung infection or something. I'm on uh, antibiotics now. I'm going to survive. So don't worry about that. I still sound like shit. I still will probably cough. But uh, by this time next week, I should be clear. So, Ed, thanks for coming in and giving me a little bit of a break so I don't have to talk an hour straight and that you can provide some of the great information that you normally provide. Yeah, I just think we should formalize our agreement here. So if you die, I get to keep the Rational Boomer Broad podcast. Absolutely, I can't. <laughs> well, there would be one addendum to that. You'd have to maintain the listeners coming on the show and uh, maybe share some duties with Old Soul because she's kind of popular. All right, man. So there's work involved. There's forget work it. involved. Yeah, forget <laughs> it. Forget it. Anyway, we got some shit going on. Um. Yeah, the big, big news, big stuff. I just have every minute something's happened here today. Yeah, and that's only been going on for about seven years. Every every minute, there's something <laughs> new coming. But we know that uh, yeah. uh, we've got Republicans' first blood in the water. We got George yep. Santos was just expelled uh, from the House of Representatives. Uh, he got 310 votes against him. He needed 290, so it was clear cut case. He is out the door. Are you pretty excited about that? Yeah, I'm just pissed off. It took so long. It should have been, he should have been gone a year ago. Uh, and I'm hearing Mike Johnson saying, "Well, I, I don't want to get rid of him because it sets a bad precedent." It sure does because I can think of at least ten other Republican congressmen who should be following him out the door. Absolutely, absolutely. Now there were five previous people that were expelled from the House in history. Three of those happened to be guys that sided with the South during the Civil War. So that was an easy one. One guy from Abscam and some guy named Traficant forgot what that was for. But uh, he is yeah. the sixth one. He's in that elite group of people being expelled from the House. And I've got to be honest with you, if you look at the House over all these years and the fact that they've only found mm -hmm. six to expel, that's fucking amazing. Yeah, and I got to say this. I, it, what surprises me is he, he's the first Republican. So that doesn't bother. I mean, I I've always noticed that Democrats eat their own. You know, yeah. uh, as soon as uh, as soon as that weird picture of uh, um, Al came out, you know, obviously uh, it's a comic moment, maybe in bad taste, but it was. You know, all these Democrats are lining up against him, uh, and uh, we lost Al Franken as a senator, which was a real shame. Um, and others I have seen, you know, who get uh, uh, the Democrats immediately uh, go with whatever uh, charges there are, don't examine them, just boot the person. Republicans mm -hmm. always stand by their assholes. I mean, you know, you got to you got to grudgingly admire their cohesion, I suppose. Right. But uh, everybody knew this guy was a sleaze bag, and that they didn't get rid of him much sooner. Uh, I know McCarthy was afraid he'd lose the, the uh, speakership is why he wanted him around. Well, he lost it anyway. He lost uh, anyway. And th so. this takes the uh, margin down from four seats to three seats, unless they have a special election yep. and the Democrats voted in. Now it's two seats. So this small margin yep. is winnowing away, especially since they're talking about the prospect of uh, Kevin McCarthy uh, maybe bowing out before Christmas. Then they're down to two seats. And if they both go Democrat, yeah. they'd be even. It's not likely in Kevin McCarthy. Yeah, and then who knows? Maybe somewhere there's a couple of Republicans with ethics or a spine. You know? so oh, please. It could be that even. <laughs> for oh, all we, well, you're right. You're well, right. It, it might as well be. It might as well be dead even because they can't come together. Their majority doesn't mean shit. It hasn't meant shit no. at all during this session. Nothing. The one thing I wanted to mention, see what you think about this. Now, when the prospect of George being expelled, Georgie was downright bitchy. Oh, you want to expel me? Yeah. 
we've got perverts and corrupt and criminal people in here, and I'm going to start naming names. But then earlier today, or earlier yesterday, just before the vote, he said, I'm just giving this to God, and uh, I'll go away graciously if they expel me. Sounds to me like somebody had a come to Jesus meeting, probably not unlike the one Madison Cawthorn had when he left office. Exactly. And and I got to say this. I mean, I, I, I probably shouldn't. No, I'll but say if, it. If, if, God, if God wanted to demonstrate his omniscience and his power and get everybody in the world believing, all he'd have to do is hit this guy with a lightning bolt. Just boom, yeah. you know, uh, just selective lightning bolts here and there. And, and you know, it's uh, it's settled. Everybody's going, OK, all right, I'll, I'll behave, you know. Um, I don't want a lightning bolt. That's all it would take. Well, you know, just, you look at, you just look a at suggestion. House. Yeah. You just look at the House of Representatives and the Senate and all this stuff. People look at I it. have a list. <laughs> I know you do. I got a list, too. Uh, but um People look at the House of Representatives and say, well, here's these upstanding, classy uh, gentlemen and gentlewomen who are representing our country. But if you were behind closed doors, uh, it's not exactly like, but I guarantee you there's enough power in there that it's not unlike the fucking mafia. You go against the mafia, no. you ain't lasting law. You'll disappear somehow. Well, a lot of these guys are that close. I mean, you know, when you get out down to the uh, representative level in a lot of these states, uh, especially like the one I live in and Point South, uh, you've got a machine that's not any different than the mafia. They may even be, uh, you know, uh, bedfellows, as right, you were. Right. Um, uh, it's always the, the biggest lowlife in town who winds up with the job. You know, I mean, certainly, certainly in my district, I mean, uh, my representative right now, her husband's in jail for selling Chinese drugs to veterans and claiming they were made here in the U.S. Now, wow. he went to jail. He took the fall. She went to Washington. So you're, you're, talking, I, you know, you're talking you know about Marsha, here? Yeah, you're talking about Marsha Blackburn's husband. No, no, no this is Marsha's our senator. This is oh, our okay. representative. Uh, I got you. Uh, in, uh, I'm. I can't come up with a name right at the moment, but it'll it'll come but, up here just before but, I'm but, done. I'll shout it out at random when I remember it. But Marcia is not much more ethical than uh, than. Uh, oh no, she had once again made the top ten of most corrupt uh, politicians. Wow. All the people who compiled those lists. So so, yeah, so she's uh, she very she was very deep into the opioid thing. By the way. I wow, mean, that's, uh, nice. Uh, that's nice. You know. Yeah. Exactly. So, so, yeah, she's a piece of work. <laughs> she's not only grifted money, she's into killing people with opioids. That's that's beautiful. That's fucking beautiful. Now, Georgie, yep. I, I, I wondered why Georgie wanted to hold on to the uh, the job as much as he did. I think one of the main reasons he went into the job was to get the pension and the health care. Turns out he didn't last long oh, enough no to doubt. get that. He didn't last long enough to get it. He's not going to get that, especially if you've been expelled. Oh, man. <laughs> After all that, he don't get the perks. That's no. just too bad. Uh, well, well, it doesn't really no, make a difference. Yeah, He's going to end up going to jail anyway. He's going to court. He's got so many uh, charges against him. That boy's fucked. Well, you would hope, but, I mean, who vetted this guy? You know, that's what Nobody. I want to know. Don't they... Yeah, well, apparently, you know, apparently not. Um, I just, did they just, uh, they go, oh, well, somebody's got to run. How about this Santos guy? He's clean, at least. <laughs> you know, spends a lot on cosmetics, I understand. Yeah. Well, you know, that's, that, that's, that's the thing uh, about Republicans. They're so desperate for power that they'll grab onto anything. George Santos would have easily been vetted if you just use Google. Uh, but they said, ah, he can win, so we'll just embrace him and let him win. And it's the same with Ron DeSantis. You know, Ron DeSantis uh, talked like Trump, and when Trump looked like he might have trouble, yes. they immediately gravitated to him. And uh, yep. once again, they were wrong.
it's uh, Republicans are just desperate for power. They'll grab onto anybody. And as of late, they've been wrong each and every fucking time. They just uh, have no clue and they'll grab onto anybody. And there's so many filthy fucking Republicans. It's not hard to pick out a bad one. Oh, no, I mean, I, you know, I can pick out at least eight that were so deeply involved in the January 6th commotion and afterward and before that they should be in jail. And there should be no doubt about it, you know? Well, they would be if they at were least, normal. At least eight, maybe ten, you know? Yeah. Did you uh, watch? Did you watch the uh, debate? I didn't realize it was on. I've watched several clips from it, and all I got to say is Newsom wiped the Newsom wiped the floor with the Santis and beat Hannity with him. <laughs> you know, it was it was no contest. I'm sorry, there was nothing there. I mean, you got two guys. Well, you've got one guy lying and another guy enabling a liar. And then you've got Newsom telling the truth and just knocking them out, of, uh, knocking them out, knocking them on the floor, wiping them up, wiping up the floor with them, and then flushing it down the toilet. That's what I saw. Well, exactly. You know, the uh, the debate was really two against one because uh, Sean Hannity wasn't at right. all fair for a moderator in this situation. But uh, of course not. But we we've got uh, what well, we've we've got uh, somebody in Gavin Newsom that is much smoother, much more articulate, much more t intelligent, and he uh, he destroyed him. Yeah, fucking absolutely destroyed him. I don't know why DeSantis decided to do this. He had nothing to gain and everything to lose, and he lost more. You know, I mean. Um... Everything that he would throw up, <laughs> Newsom would throw right back at him uh, and and prove that, number one, he was lying. And number two, whatever he was accusing California of doing, Florida was already doing and worse. Uh, the number one, of course, being that California pretty much funds the United States with their tax money, whereas Florida is one of those states that, that that's uh, dependent on uh, California tax money to uh, to balance his books, not that it does. Now, I said before the debate that I thought that this might end Ron DeSantis's chances of getting the nomination, and uh, I think I was proven out after the uh, debate because <laughs> he came out just awful. And in fact, uh, Gavin Newsom said something toward the end of it. I think he said, we have something in common. Neither one of us will be the nominee <laughs> exactly. for president. You know, and, and it's and, true. And DeSantis, all he could do was stand there, look weird and awkward, and go, "Oh, that's a lie. That's a lie. That's a lie." He looked horrible, and we yeah. knew he would. Absolutely. I mean, that's what these guys never realize. Trump is the same. Uh, they get all these softball interviews from OAN and Fox and so forth and so on, right? And uh, right. they think they're doing well. And they come up against somebody who knows the truth and can tell it. They lose every time. I mean, all Trump could do was try to shout down Biden. He had nothing coming back. Um, and he was just a blithering idiot. And anybody who couldn't see that, I'm sorry. I don't mean to hurt anyone's feelings, but you're filth. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. no shit, no <laughs> shit. Uh, I think that uh, um, I think that uh, Gavin was trying to get uh, DeSantis to lose his shit, and I'll give DeSantis qu uh, credit; he did not lose his shit. He looked nervous, though. You can see how he's moving along quickly, drinking the water. He was not yeah. happy about with what with what was going on, and, but he didn't break. So I will give him credit for that. But all the while. Gavin Newsom's just sitting there smiling nicely, calm as a motherfucker, exactly what he should be doing. And then when Ron DeSantis tried to overtalk him, Gavin Newsom did the very same thing, but fucking better. And that's exactly the way you handle those. Oh, talks. yeah. He is 
probably the most articulate guy I have seen. Yeah. Uh, maybe John Kennedy could have could uh, have matched him. Barack Obama was more of an orator. Right. Um, he was more out of the, the the black church tradition, which is is very articulate. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's uh, it is mannered to a degree. And um, Newsom is just straight out there, just laying it out. And uh, I don't know if he is a lawyer or not, but he certainly would be a great litigator. I think he is. Uh, I think he is a lawyer. Without a doubt. Well, and, and, and did you see, okay. well, for, first of all, I just want to clarify, when you say John Kennedy, he's like John Kennedy, you're suggesting John F. Kennedy, the former president, not yes. John Kennedy from Louisiana, that country <laughs> ass motherfucker. No, uh, who is faking, by the way, yeah, all yeah. of that, uh, oh, shucks, folks, that's bullshit. This guy's Oxford educated. He's got degrees from two or three different universities. He puts that on because he thinks it plays in the swamps. And he, I guess he's right. But um, he's a waste of space. Uh, I'm not sure. I guess he uses the perks of the office or something. But he uh, he's a fake. He's a fake all the way up he's one a... side and down the other. Speaking <laughs> of which. Well, let me, let me just bring up <laughs> one more thing about that debate. Um, sure. Ron DeSantis was trying so hard to have gotcha moments against uh, Gavin Newsom, and it wasn't working. And Gavin Newsom was talking about something and totally in, in, uh, apropos to nothing, Ron DeSantis pulls out this map, this big brown map, and it's got little brown dots on it. And this map, he says, see this? This is where there is dog poop all over San Francisco. He's got a map that identifies dog poop in San Francisco and how that has anything to do with anything and how you even fucking get a map that says something like that is just beyond me. Well, you don't. <laughs> you make it up. That's a pretty sad attempt. Yeah, and, and people say that. Uh, I know some people from San Francisco. I just spent a long weekend with them. And uh, they do say that, you know, the San Francisco is, is overrun with homeless, and that's because of the weather. Every H.L. Uh, right. Mencken once said, it, everything loose rolls to California, and it's kind of true. Um, because if you've got the chance, if you're living in a tent and you got a, you've got the choice between Missouri, Minnesota, or California, where are you going to go? You yeah, know? No shit. And they're spending millions and millions of dollars to find, to create houses housing for these people it's being done but uh you I, you're in minnesota when i left minnesota there were huge homeless encampments around right. the city of minneapolis i right. assume they're still there well they're they're probably uh, still there any major city but coming in the next few months i, I have a feeling they're going to be leaving because it's going to be 20 below here in, in in minnesota not a great place to be sleeping in a tent uh, agreed, but I lived down near the Forest Precinct, which, you know, burned up during the George Floyd right. um, uh, affair a while back. And there were down by the uh, Little Earth, um, um, right. which is kind of a kind of an in-town reservation for people who don't, don't know. It's it's uh, a Native American housing area. And there was a huge encampment of uh, homeless people right at that off ramp there. And they were there the whole winter. So wow. I don't know if they have kerosene heaters or something or what, but it, it's insane that that uh, that's the case. But but it was. Now I'm not. I'm I'm assuming it's still the same. It could be. I I, I don't get down there. I haven't much. heard different. I'm in the suburbs and I pretty much stay yeah. where I'm at. But well, suffice to say, Ron DeSantis got his ass kicked by uh, uh, by Gavin Newsom. There really was no value in Ron DeSantis doing this. And like I say, all he could do was lose in this situation. No. And he lost big. He lost big. Somebody said the only one, only person who won that debate was Nikki Haley. And that's probably true. Yeah. She didn't show up. Yeah. Well, she didn't exactly. show up, but, but, uh, because but she, it took, she it took, wasn't invited. I mean, you know, she wasn't invited, but, it, but everything Ron DeSantis did put him below uh, Nikki, Nikki Haley. So, you know, they're, kind, they're, they're becoming more even. And and now she just probably pulled ahead because Ron DeSantis is such a awkward fucking dope. 
Well, I, you know, my wife and I watched the first two debates, and we both said Nikki Haley won them both uh, simply because she was the only one that wasn't a complete idiot, right? Um, and did not present present herself as a complete idiot. I would never vote for her because she is a Republican, and I, everything that the Republicans are for, I'm against, literally. Right. And uh, so, no, I, I, you know, I would never. I, I do, however, would rather see a respectable candidate for the Republicans rather than idiots and oafs like Trump or DeSantis or Ramos Marmy um, or whoever else you want to come up with. I, or somebody, you know, a player to be named later, which may happen. Although I noticed Nikki's getting the Koch brothers' money now, so that'll go a long way for her. And that pretty much puts the kibosh on any campaign by DeSantis. Yeah, Rod DeSantis is done. He's been done for a while. I don't know when he's going to realize it, but uh, he's not going anywhere. And uh, the fact that they're pulling money away from Donald Trump and giving to Nikki Haley or anybody else, Trump's got to see the writing on the wall, too. In spite of whatever vote voter support he has, all the big money's pulling away from him. Yeah, and uh, I want to get into that. He got some bad news, too, uh, oh? today. Okay. Um, a lot of people got bad news today. Uh, I did just want to give you the name. It's Diana Harshbarger is You're my right. representative. And she at she and her husband ran a company called American Inhalation Specialist, A I M S. She claimed during the campaign that she had nothing to do with it. When they followed the paper trail, they find there are two officers listed, and she's one of them. Of course. And the other is her husband, who yeah. went to prison for four years for substituting Chinese drugs for American drugs. And she was just as guilty as him. He went to prison. She went to Washington. And there are Diana the Patriots. Harsh Barker. And there and, we go. And they're the ones that claim they're the Patriots. Exactly. You know, and this with the let me let me again say they were taking this Chinese medicine unvetted, claiming it was American, and it was being given to veterans. Veterans. This is how much of a patriot Diana Harsh Barker is. Basically, uh, basically making the veterans kind of a uh, experimental hamsters yeah pretty much you know wow. and uh um and and then as we uh i got a lot to tell you about tennessee eventually but we've got other fish to fry uh we got news on trump we got news on well we've lost i guess if you believe in the old thing the old saying um that uh, people die in threes, that's not the saying, but that's that's kind of what it comes down to. So we right. had um, Ros Rosalind Carter, we had Henry Kissinger, and we had Sandra Day O'Connor, who right. just died. That um, just happened. Uh, yeah. few, you know, so that should be the three. Now, of those, there were two <clears throat> very good people and one pile of shit. True. So um, I don't, I'm, I guess who... Guess which uh, one is which? Well, you know, <laughs> I had great, great respect for both of the women. The guy was was a, a, a war criminal um, and an unscrupulous person. Period. Well, I'm glad I'm you bring Henry Kissinger. Here. I'm, I'm glad you bring that up. Henry Kissinger, back in the day when he worked for Nixon and Gerald Ford, he was hugely famous. In spite of you know, he, he had a big job, but he was probably one of the more famous secretaries of state we've ever had i mean he was bouncing around with uh with hollywood people and some people even called him a sex symbol which is weird because he was this little fucking troll but he had a lot of power back in yeah. that day and i think a lot of people thought he was good because of you know some of the things that came out of uh, the nixon and the the ford administration as far as him negotiating but a lot of people think he's a war criminal and i was a little young at that point so please explain why you believe he's a war criminal. I don't, I don't, I'm not arguing with you about it. I just need to learn something here. Okay. Uh, during Vietnam, uh, the, uh, the military uh, and Nixon, the Nixon administration decided that um, the uh, Viet Cong were, um, 
had bases in Cambodia where they stored right. uh, munitions and so forth. And then they would come across the border and uh, attack our troops in Vietnam. Right. So uh, they expanded the war into Cambodia with pretty much carpet bombing, uh, destroying villages indiscriminately, uh, um, killing innocent men, women, and children when it was never proved any of what they were alleging was actually true anyway. And uh, this was something that uh, Congress refused to authorize. They did it on the sly. And this was all at Henry Kissinger's urging. It was his plan, his idea. He's a war criminal uh, in the same way that uh, anybody who bombs civilians <laughs> is a war criminal. We all do it. Remember shock and awe in Iraq? Right. They weren't right. bombing troops. They are bombing everything. Right. It was a war crime. We did it. Okay? Um, get used to it. It happens in every war. We all we all shake our hands and say, no, no, it can't happen. And then we do it again. Um, right. Now, that that's the cynical view. My view is don't fucking do it. Okay? You don't have to. It never really does any good because most of the munitions are wasted. And the ones that aren't kill people that shouldn't be killed. Well, the whole so, Viet, the whole Vietnam. I thing, say he's a war criminal. You grew up in that era. Uh, I was young at the time. Yeah. But the whole Vietnam thing, everybody, it was it was a, very contentious in this country. The young people thought it was a pointless war that there was no reason to fight it, and they were getting drafted to go off. We 50, were right. And, and the old people said, "No, you got to be a patriot. You got to be a patriot. You got to fight for our country." Well, how they were fighting for our country in, in North Vietnam, I don't I don't know to this day. But after it's all said and done, as people look back on it, I would suspect even those people that believed in it initially have to believe it was a pointless war and we got fucking nothing out of it. We we basically turned tail and run and, and got nothing out of all that war, all those years and all those deaths. We got zero out of that. Yeah, and there was a lot of evil that went on. I mean, um, right now I'm hearing all of this stuff about how college campuses have to be cleaned up and how all of this stuff that's going on on college campuses is bad and all of that. I've heard it before. I was there and they were talking about me. Okay, uh -huh. we knew what was going on. We were telling the truth. It wasn't us who was lying. It wasn't the students. It wasn't the people who say no way and go into Canada. And thank you, Jimmy Carter, for letting those people come back. That was the best thing you ever did. You're pardoning of the people who went to Canada rather than going to Vietnam and killing innocent people right, or right. getting killed yourself. Right. Okay. But the, the, the other point about Kissinger is Nixon wanted, had reached the point that he, uh, or rather Johnson had reached the point where he saw it was an unwinnable war. And it right. was destroying his legacy. Here he was, the greatest domestic president since FDR, and his whole legacy is being destroyed because of this war he got suckered into. Because Kennedy started it, he inherited it, and he was ready to get the fuck out. Right. Kissinger goes to Vietnam and says, hang on a little bit. Nixon will give you a better deal. That's verified. He's a war criminal. They so should, he should be in a potter's field and there should be no lying in state. So what Kissinger <laughs> did with Nixon in Vietnam yes. is similar to what Reagan did to the Iranian kidnappers. Exactly the same. Exactly the same. He said the president, basically. Wow. These people put other people's lives in jeopardy simply for a little more power politically. That's the kind of fucking people... As a matter of fact, you, you could lay every American casualty following the... Uh, when um, the Democrats left office, every American casualty past that point belongs to Henry Kissinger. Wow. The other thing, people... You know, who's our big enemy right now? China, right? Right. China? Henry Kissinger's been fucking working for China for the last 30 years. He right. works for China. He doesn't right. work for us. He works for China. When Xi came to talk to uh, um, President Biden, who did he want to be there? Even right. though he's 100 years old, 
Henry Kissinger, yeah. because Kissinger worked for China. So we're glad that Henry's dead. And uh, Henry lived I, I'm not gonna, time long. You're not going to what? I'm not going to go less. I'm not. I'm too close to it myself to wish it on anybody. But I, I really wish that uh, his legacy would be truly examined and there would be no tributes. Rather, there would be condemnation so that if you can't say anything about good about the dead, you know the old saying. Yeah, you're probably right. On the other side of the coin, you got Rosalind Carter, who was probably one of the most gracious, one of the most giving, uh, charitable people in the history of this country. Probably one of the greatest first ladies we ever had. And I would say actually created the modern office of um, the uh, the first lady, having yeah. a staff and actually being involved with with things po political. Certainly, FDR's wife um, had uh -huh. uh, a great deal to do with the New Deal. But uh, Rosalind was there in every meeting. She was Jimmy's right, good right hand. Anything that was good was done with her approval. And the mistake, she probably took Jimmy aside and pulled his ear and said, I told you not to do that. Right. <laughs> and, and I, I have to say that the great tragedy of this letter or of this century has been that Rosalind Carter was not given a second term with Jimmy right. and that Hillary was not elected uh, yeah. that, in both cases. And, and we have to pay homage to another great American woman, and that's Sandra Day and Connor, who, though a conservative, did not always go vote with the conservative majority and uh, was a reasonable and also a very distinguished jurist uh, and did serve her country very well in that capacity. And she's notable because that's Sandra she was, Day O'Connor, who just passed. She's the uh, first. She's notable as being the first uh, female Supreme Court justice. And I remember when she was appointed, uh, it was quite a big deal. And, and and as you say, she was conservative. But that's back in the day when conservatism didn't mean uh, a treason. I mean, you had conservatives and you had uh, uh, liberals, and they would argue and they would not agree, but there was compromise and negotiation. That's back in the days when it worked the way it was supposed to work. Nowadays, it's just... You're either with us or you're against us, and uh, there is no compromise. And that's why we have so many problems right now. Right. And she didn't have some bogus agenda or bogus uh, base uh, way of looking at the Constitution like originalism, which is a stupid, stupid concept. Uh, she favored states' rights, which is okay. Um I, I would argue with her about it. I, 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 I'm a federalist. I think federalism is the way to go, and the states' rights are, in most cases, just a reason to discriminate against uh, a minority. That's what states' rights have amounted to, mostly, in the history of the United States. Uh, I'd do away with them if I <laughs> were up to me. When I'm philosopher king, and it's that day is coming, forget about state rights. Yeah, yeah, it's... it's uh... Pretty pretty sad day when you lose uh, three people and only two of them are worth worth uh, paying homage over. Henry Kissinger, as Ed pointed out, had his problems over his lifetime. And I, I don't feel sorry for him. He had a hell of a life. He made a lot of money. He dated a lot of attractive women. And he was a star for a period of time. And uh, what he gave us back was a lot of criminality and, and, and some war crimes as well. A lot of deaths on his on his back as he goes. Um, you know, the thing about that that funeral for Rosalind Carter is Jimmy was there and Jimmy was not looking good. Yes. Jimmy's not too no. far behind her. And it's a sad day. Can right. you imagine what would have happened if Jimmy Carter would have actually beaten Ronald Reagan? This world would be entirely different right now had Jimmy Carter won re-election. I've always said that, and I, I really believe that uh, if Jimmy had been reelected, he and Gorbachev would have changed the face of the world. Yeah. Because Gorbachev was the one who broke up the Soviet Union, or let right. it break up, let's put it that way, uh, who said, it's ridiculous for us to maintain this. You know, there's no reason to it. We can 
prosper if we don't do it. And Jimmy, I think, would have met him on equal ground and they could have worked it out so that uh, we would there would have been no arms race. We could have put away uh, the nukes. Right. Unfortunately, Jimmy lost and we got Reagan, who was going to use the Russians as his whipping boy to justify huge expenditures in defense, which just went to his friends. You know, right. I mean, it, 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 we missed, we really missed the boat there. And it is, it's really unfortunate. Well, and I think that Ronald Reagan was the start of the Republican Party coming to this point they're at now. He's the one that wanted the trickle-down theory that never worked. He's the one that kind of attacked and and uh, robbed the Social Security. He's the one that cut the funding for mental health care. He did a lot of damage. I mean, a lot of people look at him as a great Republican president. And what he did have going for him, he was a good speaker. You know, he's a former actor. He had this kind of grandfatherly image, but he did a lot of fucking damage to this country. And I'm saying this as somebody who at 20 years old voted for him because I didn't know fuck all about fuck all. But had it not been for Reagan, we wouldn't be where we are here today. No, it's true. I mean, the he started the ball, ball rolling on trickle down, which uh, and these gigantic tax cuts for corporations and wealthy individuals, which allow them to accumulate these monstrous amounts of cash with which they can purchase all the politicians they want and get anything they want, while you and I pay the tax bill that they no longer foot. Mm -hmm. Plus, they continually run up these gigantic, and Reagan started this too, running up these gigantic deficits. Right. Uh, Reagan, Bush, Trump, there's your deficit right there. Those three guys, you don't need any Democrats in there because it's 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 pitiful what the, the Democrats add to the deficit compared to the Republicans. It's a wash. It's a rounding error. Right. Yeah, I, I, I've seen that list. And every time the Republicans get in, they tell you <coughs> they're all about conservatism and the debt. But they're the only ones that raise the debt significantly. We know Donald Trump did by seven to eight trillion dollars. Uh, and Joe Biden has dropped the debt a little bit. I mean, it's growing, but uh, yes. if you want real financial conservatism in this country, you really got to go with a Democrat in spite of what the uh, messaging tells you. Yeah, all we need to do to, to set things right is to put a wealth tax in and to make corporations pay what they should and by right. pay what they should, I mean raise corporate tax rates back to where they were at least before Bush, right? And uh, preferably before uh, Trump as well. Uh, I mean before Reagan, but uh, if you get them between, especially between Bush and Trump, these last uh, tax cuts for corporations and the wealthy have pretty much guaranteed that the middle class is gone. Because uh, we have to pay for everything else or don't pay for it, more likely, which is why our infrastructure sucks and right. why right now you're seeing Republicans going everywhere and trying to take credit for the spending that Biden put in place to address infrastructure. I just right. saw Mike Johnson at an airport the other day that's being expanded with Biden money, and right. he's there celebrating it. You know, but people don't remember that. But if 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 your street got paid this year, and mine did, that's Biden money. You're riding with Biden. Exactly. No matter yeah. what it is, infrastructure wise, it was Biden money. All, all you have to do is to go back to Bill Clinton, who balanced the budget. Yes. Okay. So maybe we take a look at where we and were. How did he do the... that? He raised taxes on the wealthy. Yes. Well, so if you want to balance the budget and get everything hunky-dory, you would think it would be hard to say, well, let's just replicate what Bill Clinton did. But the Republicans refuse exactly. to do that. They make it worse and they blame the Democrats. That's what they fucking do. And up until the time when people don't buy into their bullshit, it's one thing when the base believes them, but I have the biggest problem when Democrats believe what the Republicans are doing. Half the negative shit you see about Democrats right now 
is all started from Republicans opening their mouth and throwing it in the narrative. They say it enough where people think, well, God, it must be real. You got to stop listening to that shit. Yeah, listen to the rational boomer. You'll get the real dope because, quite frankly, all the media are owned by corporations now, except a tiny, tiny few. And that means you're not getting the whole story. Usually it's it's uh, not that uh, CBS, NBC, ABC is lying to you. It's just you're not telling the truth, the whole truth. They're right. trying to make it equivocal. Oh, well, it's it's both parties' fault. Bullshit. It's not. You can't name me one thing that's the Democrats' fault. It's all Republicans' fault because they refuse to govern. All they want to do is not govern, to leave everything where it is, where the corporations get all the money and the rich people get the rest. Absolutely. And they own the corporations, so they get it all. (laughs) They get it all. That's That's what what it comes down to. Greedy motherfuckers. I'll tell you what, we're going to take a quick break, and we will be right back. Now, I'm catching your damn. We are back on the Rational Boomer podcast. And uh, um, we have Ed with us today, thankfully. I'm in the late stages of my cold. Sounds like Ed might be getting one too. Uh, but um, yeah, I think that's just, I don't usually talk as much. Yeah, you know, that's the funny thing is when you sit and talk uh, for an hour, uh, it, it gets a little taxing. I can do a three-minute TikTok and get through with it and then cough after the fact. But when you do a show like this, it's 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 a little harder. But we're going to yeah. push through. Uh, people say, I can't believe you're doing this uh, uh, when you're sick. And, and I said, you know, back in the day when I was doing the traffic reports, I had no backup. So Ed has heard me doing this shit pretty sick uh, a number of times over the years. And, and this ain't shit. It's been a lot worse than this. Yeah, uh, thank goodness for the cough button. <laughs> yeah, remember yeah. that. Remember those days, you know. I'd, I'd wait in silence for like, is he gonna make it? Is he gonna make it? Well, there, there was one time. Up a lung there. There was one time I was on, and I was on with Kevin in the afternoon, and they finally just took me off the air because my voice was so gone, you literally couldn't hear what i was saying but i was i was trying to tough it out yeah i was no pussy i am yeah. guarantee you that but uh anyway <laughs> you wanted to talk about some things yeah, going well, on. there were many days i shouldn't have shown up either but you know when you when you're <clears throat> going in at four in the morning you're not going to run into anybody so you're not going to give anybody anything and you spray down the mic when you're done and who are you going to call home and fall in bed yeah exactly well that was it you know Exactly. Who are you going to call? We had very little backup. No, 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 no backup. Anyway, um, you were going to talk about Donald Trump because some shit has happened that uh, is kind of interesting, and it's not good shit for Donald Trump. So I'm always anxious to hear that. Well, a federal appeals court has ruled that he can be civilly charged for stirring up January sixth. So uh, I know that at least two Capitol Police officers have filed suits against him, which they should have, and I'm sure more will now. Now, this can still be appealed, of course, but only to the Supreme Court, and they can knock it down. But um, that uh, big fortune of his could be a lot smaller when you get all of those Capitol Police who were assaulted. And how many is that? I don't know if they all decide to sue him. Um, he's not going to have anything left. So, well, well they better hurry on it. Go a fields court. Well, they better hurry on it because we're looking at the end of January for the decision on this lawsuit with Letitia James, and uh, yeah, uh, he ain't going to have any money left after that. I'll be surprised if what? anybody else gets any money out of Donald Trump after what's going to be taken from him in the uh, Letitia James lawsuit. Well, there's another one, and I haven't seen the follow-up on it yet to know if what's going to happen. But apparently, he transferred $40 million from the Trump um, business for his personal use to pay legal fees, which I thought was illegal because I thought his assets were frozen and that he wasn't able to do that. Um, So I don't know where where that's going to go. 
that yeah, would have been violating something to do with the New York um, uh, lawsuit in order to pay for all of his legal troubles. Uh, Forty million, and you know, all that's uh, that's a sizable chunk of change. Well, that's got to pay. You know, he probably needs that for McDonald's and hookers. Uh, you know, you you got you can't, you can't you can't deny him his essentials. He's, <laughs> I, I think we're getting to the point now where Donald Trump is starting to uh, starting to scramble because you know he'd always been able to move around money and and co op money from illegal places, and now he's under the microscope. And every time he does, it's going to be a, a, a notice. And in this case, uh, I don't know who they gave it to. They gave it to somebody with a special title to look at. But this can't be good for Donald Trump. Yes, once he can't. Once he can't move money, uh, he's gonna. It's gonna be impossible for him to pay for anything. Yeah, and that well, he never did anyway. I mean, his modus operandi was would be to engage someone to, you know, paint his club or something like that. And then when the bill came in, he'd give them half and say, that's all you're getting, sue me. I mean, yeah. I mean he did that constantly. That yeah. was his negotiations, he called yeah. it, negotiations. What it meant was he was just stiffing people. You know, I, only one guy stuck him out. And um, uh, this, I forget what exactly this had to do with, but it was, uh, he provided some sort of material or service or service to one of Trump's uh, clubs and uh, the final payment of $30,000, which ain't much, really, when you think about it, right? No, that's $30,000. Uh, uh, his lawyers said, said, we're not paying that because we weren't totally satisfied and we got deep pockets. We can keep you in course for 10 years and, uh, you know, go suck it. Uh, but they picked on the wrong guy. He stayed in it the whole way. And he was eventually paid $300,000 plus his court costs. Nice. So uh, that, I always thought that was the greatest thing ever that the guy, that the David whipped the Goliath. And well, and that's, we know that's, this is the fact. We know this is what happened and why people still see him as some sort of businessman. He, it's a total fiction. He was no businessman. He was just a fucking crook. He is a crook. There is no question about it. We also hear that he just filed a motion down in Georgia for a mistrial because of First Amendment rights and all that stuff. I don't think Judge McAfee is going to buy into it. He's already kind of suggested he's not feeling that. But this is what they're doing. They're just trying every motion they can possibly file and hoping something sticks to the wall. Yeah. But but nothing is. Uh, I don't even know why they bother anymore because yeah. they lose every time. I think what they're trying to do is delay, 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 so that then at some point, they can maybe ask the Supreme Court directly file something where they can say uh, he has to be able to run and, you know, that somehow or other the court will shut it all down until after the election in the hopes that he'll win and then he can have his own DOJ just do away with everything. I think that's what they're ultimately hope for, hoping for is delay, delay, delay uh, and hope that somehow or other he can get elected. Well, you know, I, and then I, we're all fucked. You know. Yeah, we are, but but it's just not going to happen. I mean, if I'm if I'm Donald Trump, and my greatest hope to get out from underneath all this trouble is to win the presidential election and then figure out a way to uh, do away with all these charges. That's like that's like being on the worst football team in history, in the end in your own end zone, trying to throw a hundred yard pass, and the only yeah. people down on the other end are linemen. He, yes. he has no fucking chance. It's not going. We hope. Yeah, I, I just don't. I don't see a path for him winning. There is nothing. Well, just remember, going on Hitler, Hitler went to jail, but before he became the chancellor. So you know, there's that. Well, that's true. That's true. I, I just don't think it's possible. I know it's not possible. Donald Trump is done as of a year ago, and uh, he can continue to spew the shit he spews, but nobody in their right mind, whether they be moderates or, or conservatives in the Republican Party is going to vote for him and perpetuate this fucking 
disaster on this country because it's not just Democrats that are suffering I'm, under under Trump; it's Republicans too. What I'm waiting for is the public meltdown. I mean, yeah. we've heard that it happens in private. There's the catch on the walls and all that, right? Right. I'm waiting. Maybe, maybe it's in a courtroom. Came close, I think, recently. But at some point, he's going to lose his shit publicly, and people are going to see it. And even, you know, I'm, I mean, there are some people who will never be convinced. And that's obvious. I yeah. see interviews with him all the time and think he's still president. I mean, these people, these are marginal people. Right. Um, but and anyone with any intelligence at all, at some point or other, will see. It's like the Humphrey Bogart character in uh, the Kane mutiny, uh, court martial, where he's rolling the steel balls and all right. that. And he goes, he starts talking about strawberries and stuff. Or uh, there's going to be the. Uh, um, you know, the Andy Griffith in uh, a face in the crowd who's talking on a hot mic and saying stuff that gets him. I mean, sooner or later, I'm waiting for that moment. I'm waiting for the moment where everything changes for Donald Trump. And it's coming. I, oh. I truly believe that because, I mean, I, I think there's a, there is a certain karma for guys like this. Uh, these... Uh, uh, narcissists who think they can't lose when you finally see them lose and you see it in their eyes because they realize it they know they've taken that step too far and i'm, I'm waiting to see that and i want that immortalized just like that uh um the uh oh, i've got to get into this too the um the photograph of him where he where he surrendered right um, right for his mug shot right I want I want the moment when he realizes he's fucked, immortalized. Right. Well, you know. By, by the way, that that uh, that that picture, that uh, mugshot. He was he started marketing it, using it. Turns right. out, all the money has to go to the police department because they own. Nice. They own the image. Nice. <laughs> nice you know, little fundraiser. Nice little fundraiser. He'll get tickets to the policeman's ball uh, but but I'm, I'm a firm believer in destiny and i've always seen this in my life i've seen situations and it's almost like i can foretell how it's going to go it's gotten on some track and it, it can't go any way but that way and i think the tide has turned so much with republicans and donald trump and everything they do and everything they say is going wrong I think we'll ultimately see Donald Trump's meltdown and final crash, and that the Republican Party will have to step back and say, fuck, we better change things up. And that's why that's why when people always talk to me about Project 2025 and the fear behind it, and granted, I've read some of it and I get it. I just don't think that will ever be a real thing. I think that Project 2025 will be one of the factors that create the demise of the Republican Party and put it in a situation where that 2025 will never happen because the Republicans either won't be in power or they'll finally realize that all of this this fascist shit is a loser and they've got to figure something else out to win elections. What I don't understand, and, and maybe it's a function of you can't keep a secret anymore. Right. Why would you put 2025 out there? Why would you warn people about this is what you're going to do? The same with Trump. Why would he be putting out there, I'm going to round up all the illegals and put them in concentration camps and then we're going to throw them all out of the country. And I have to see all of these business people going, well, well that's a joke, right? Right. That'll put us out of business if he does that because all our workers are illegals. All of our workers are illegals. If we don't have them, then, and, and they pay $11 billion dollars in tax money in every year that'll just be gone and uh what how are we going to make up for that 11 billion dollars they pay in taxes and never never claim their social security uh social security will go broke much further because of the illegals won't be putting their money in it anymore what are right. we going to do well well the other thing is too that along the same vein is is why would you overturn roe v wade just before the midterms <laughs> i mean all, well, all these go. 
all these decisions are can only be explained two ways. They're either fucking stupid because anyone with common sense knows that overturning Roe v. Wade was going to ruin 2022 and it's going to be the main factor in 2024. They're losing elections left and right because of that one issue. Or they are seeing the end is near and they're just frantic and they're doing anything to whip up their base. And unfortunately, the base isn't big enough to win elections. So either way they go, they're fucking losing. Yeah, I think, I, you know, maybe it's because they're in the echo chamber. They only talk to each other. See, I, I think the strength of Congress at one point was that you had John McCain and, and Biden being friends, for right. example, or right. Lindsey uh, and John McCain, different people, you know, right. across the aisle. They had friendships. They go out for a drink. They go over to a barbecue at each other's houses and they, they put stuff together. Uh, to make things happen. And every bill had both a Republican and a Democratic sponsor on it of any significance. Right. You don't see that anymore. So I, all they hear is their own people telling them, in most cases, bullshit. It's like John Eastman filling uh, Trump's head full of all this crap about these uh, fake electors and all of that. Now, that's another thing Eastman just flipped, I believe. I Did he just that, flip? that he well, just flipped, so... Well, we I know, believe that's the case, yes. Well, we know what happened in uh, uh, Georgia. Uh, Fonnie Willis basically said, uh, everybody can have deals except <laughs> Rudy Giuliani, Mark Meadows, and Donald Trump. And there she laid it out. Yeah, Those are the only three she wants to go after. And she'll let everybody yeah. else flip, cut them a deal. Now, John Eastman may be cutting a deal. A lot of people think, why would you let him off the hook? But He's not off the hook in the federal trial, no. so so he may get nailed there. And that's the weird thing about this is that Meadows is his complete immunity in the federal court, but in Georgia, he's not getting a deal. He fucked up there. He should have exactly. gotten a deal for I both. I mean, they're parties. all going to pay eventually if Trump is not reelected. Right. The only reason Donald Trump is running to be president again is he thinks that's the only way that he can avoid prison. That's it. Uh, I mean, he may want vengeance really bad and so forth, but he made a trillion dollars while he was in office. I just saw that figure yesterday. They figured out he stole a trillion, a, a trillion dollars plus by being president. Yeah, and that yeah. doesn't even count what uh, Ivanka and Jared made. And uh, the other, I'm sure... Eric and, and Bozo were somehow or other managed to get a few bucks out of it. You know? Yeah, no question. Um, um, well, they worked for the Trump organization and they filled the Trump hotels with, you know, Secret Service agents and anybody else they could find. You know, they made made pants drive all the way across Ireland to, <laughs> to stay in a Trump hotel or, or all the way across Britain. I forget which it was, you know, that kind of stuff. Uh, they, they knocked down big time that way. So they benefited the Trump organization, but Trump himself, um, and who knows what he got for selling secret documents to the Saudis, which I'm sure he did, um, if not the North Koreans and others in Russia, for sure. Uh, that's all yet to be, that's all yet to come out. We haven't even heard about that yet. You know, they'll be finding shit on this guy for the next hundred years, no doubt. Well, you know, that what's interesting... Because I... what these guys always forget uh, what they forget is that regimes change. Right. And when regimes change, often facts come out that we didn't know. Look at all we learned when uh, when uh, Glasnos was uh, going on, uh, when, uh, you know, the transition before Putin were right. on the, they were going into the KGB files and saying, oh, yeah, the Rosenbergs were guilty. Yeah, they were. They worked for us. Yeah. Uh, and that kind of thing, you know. Well, you but, know, it's uh, it, 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 it's interesting. Uh, another thing that happened in New York is that uh, the appeals court upheld the gag order against Donald Trump. Yes, and, it, and it's what's weird about that is is that he had the gag order. It was uh, Judge Engeron put a stay on it, and then of course uh, Donald Trump went unhinged. He went after the judge, uh, his wife the law clerk, and now it was upheld. 
and he's already starting to say things now. That gag order is all well and good, but until they start holding him responsible and uh, uh, punishing him appropriately, the gag order doesn't really fucking mean a thing until they do something. And I'm hoping that now we're at that point where he's going to have to be held accountable and something significant is going to have to happen. I think I think you you bring up something there that that needs to be addressed, and I don't know how it will be or if it ever will be, and that is the amendments to the Constitution, specifically the first and the second. Okay, right. freedom of speech. We hear freedom of speech shall not be violated. Blah blah blah. Right, and the same with uh, with guns. Although the second amendment is the only one that begins with because. Right. This, you know, the others are just this, <laughs> but but right. uh, the idea that uh, free speech, everything, being able to say anything is free speech, and I think that need, you know, people say you can't yell fire in a crowded theater. Well, you can. Sorry, but right. um, there are times, and this being one of them. When you're uh, you're a mafia figure and you're saying, "Well, it'd be nice if that guy disappeared," <laughs> you know, which is what Trump is essentially doing—not in so many words, but he's saying this uh, this law clerk is, you know, unhinged, blah blah blah, and she's uh, Schumer's girlfriend and all of this bullshit. He's trying to get these people killed, right? right? Exactly. There has to be a limit on speech of that kind, and how do we do that? We need a conversation on that because anything even under this gag order it's still going to have to be litigated i think i mean i the judge can put him in jail for sure i mean he can say up oh, you violated it in the pokey you go he can do that right but then it's going to trigger a whole nother set of legal complications there needs to be some sort of a you know the legislature legislatively it has to be done there has to be some sort of meeting of minds between conservatives and liberals and so forth. What are the limits of free speech? Are there any or not? Well, of course, there's limits. I mean, we've seen the limit of free speech with regards to Donald Trump. Donald Trump was sued for defamation of character. He lost. He defamed her again. There's a new law lawsuit going against him. And then just the other day, he defamed her again. So now there's probably a third one. Free speech yeah. is fine. She alone can she she alone can bankrupt the mother. Right, you know? but but if, if you can say there's free speech, but you can't defame somebody, and clearly you can't incite violence or chaos in something. So you can say whatever you want, but there are some things that you'll be held accountable for. But at the same time, for example, okay, uh, what did he? I was uh, sawing him. Saw him. Right against against Nancy Pelosi and calling her a deranged lunatic and then making aspersions about her her husband and so forth. But at one point, politicians would not have done that. They would not have. No president other than Trump would have ever said Nancy Pelosi is a deranged lunatic. They would no. not have done that. No. And if they had, they would have suffered consequences for it um, within their own party. Uh, but that has gone by the wayside. That is Trump alone who has done that. I mean, it's one thing to have Rush Limbaugh do it, uh, which also kicked that can down the road a little way. It broke norms and so forth. You didn't have people on the radio saying the kind of things that, that uh, Rush Limbaugh did until he did it. Right. And until there were no consequences for him doing it. Right. Uh, no FCC stepped in and said, you can't say that. Um, because why? Because it was ineffectual by that point, and well, Reagan got rid of the fairness doctrine that would uh, that would have allowed the, the FCC to maybe govern some of that stuff or make some sort of uh, statement about it that would have kept uh, the right wing radio from uh, coming to to life. Uh, because it was only after that that it really took off. Only right. after Reagan got rid of the fairness doctrine and, and uh, to pull the teeth of the FCC that that happened. Now, Trump doesn't realize, for example, that the FCC doesn't control cable, for example, and he's wanting them to uh, 
crack down on MSNBC, uh. you know, and that sort of thing. He doesn't get the difference, and a lot of people don't. That it was only the uh, the Fairness Doctrine, which only broadcast TV and radio, because that's all we had at the time. Right, right. There was no cable. There was no streaming, and that's right. that's why. But when cable came along, they were not governed by the same set of rules. No, they are not. Uh, Do Trump got a little close here. He may be broaching the edge here. He said something he, in a kind of a desperate tone. He said that Joe Biden better do something about stopping all these trials and all this stuff before it's too late. Too late for what? What are you going to do to Joe Biden? What are you asking other people to do to Joe Biden? Now, when you start threatening the president of the United States, that's got to be the tipping point. That's got to be the point at which somebody has to shut him up. Even the Republicans should want that to be done. Uh, well, remember, he threatened Hillary uh, yeah. in, a, in a debate, told her he was going to put her in prison. And then, of course, he pussied out when he got in. But yeah. uh, because he's uh, that's what he is. He's just uh, uh, you know, somebody shoots his mouth off with no idea about um, what he can or can't do. But his threat is that if he is reelected, that he's going to put Biden on trial for some unspecified um, and and everybody else, everybody he knows. I mean, he's big into revenge. Yeah, I can't absolutely. remember. I think it was Elon Musk who had dinner with somebody had dinner with him. And all he talked about was revenge. Well, he's, he's about to get revenge on this person. You know? Well, he's, he's about revenge because he's a bully and, and it's all about threatening people to try to get them to fold and, and give in to him. That's all he knows. But when it comes down to actually doing something, he's incapable of doing it. I wanted to bring up one other guy, a representative, who I very much fucking hate because I think he's a phony and I think he's a fucking lunatic. And that is Clay Higgins. Now, Clay Higgins is a rep. Yes. I don't remember what state he's from. I don't care. Uh, but he's the one that was suggesting the FBI was behind the January 6th attack. He was talking to an FBI uh, director, yes. Ray, and he says, do you know Ghost about buses. Ghost buses. <laughs> well, he came out yes. and uh, said something about Jack Smith, you know, how Jack Smith is doing uh, a disjust uh, injustice to this country. And uh, he said something like his time is short, something along those lines. Yeah. And uh, that, to me, yeah, he sounds said like it to him, you know. Right. That sounds it like is. a threat. You know, he Yeah, he speaking of which he just compared he just compared expelling George Santos to the crucifixion, by the way. Oh no, sure. Well that's weird because George Santos yeah. thought he was Mary Magdalene. Is it is he Jesus or yeah. is he Mary Magdalene? <laughs> Well, he's from Louisiana, so that tells you all you need to know about Clay Higgins. Yeah, only no. thing that comes, only thing, the only thing from Louisiana that's any good is jazz. Um, yeah, and food. You know, everything else is waste. Well, yeah, if you like crowd ads, I suppose it's not bad. <laughs> no, but this Clay Higgins, he likes to come off like a country gentleman, you know, and he talks and he uses yeah. the vernacular of somebody who's sophisticated. This guy is a fucking idiot. This guy is a lunatic. Yes. He's it's all yes. about performance performance to him, and he's a fucking joke. If he represented me, I would just be fucking livid. Because he says some of the craziest shit and he just gets away with it. Now I don't think he's gonna get expelled, but uh somebody's gotta straighten his shit out. I think one of the problems he has, because what he said when he was talking about Jack Smith, he says, I wear with a badge of courage. Uh, that I'm on one of the lists that Jack Smith has. Uh, I would not be surprised if he's on one of those lists that may get the superseding indictments for his help in the January 6th committee. I think he's squirming right now, and he's doing what Donald Trump is trying to do by discounting Jack Smith, and it ain't fucking working. I think he's famous for saying, yeah, I better get a pardon, too. You know, yeah. I, think, uh, I think he was one of the ones who asked for a pardon. Um, you know, Biggs, uh, Higgins, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene. I, if if any of those people were my representative, I'd want some money back because they're not representing you people. 
listen up. They're not representing you. They're grandstanding. All they do is shoot off their mouth. They don't, I bet you they do not go to committee meetings. I bet you they miss votes all the time. It's like uh, watching Lauren Boebert charging up the steps, trying to get there in time to vote for something that she then claimed that she was not voting in protest, you know, but we saw her trying to get there, you know. She's yeah. probably running away from giving somebody a hand job and got caught up, so to speak. Well, you never know. I, I, the, the House floor is kind of bereft of decorum these days. She was called the bitch. Uh, Kevin, Kevin uh, McCarthy elbows one of the crazy eights that he talked about. Now, that's another thing. There's a rumor out that Kevin's going to leave the house on uh, on or around Christmas, which would be interesting. That would bring the majority down to two people for the Republicans in the house. You think that uh, Kevin is just saying, fuck you guys, I'm going to ace you out and I'm just going to fucking walk away. You didn't protect me. You didn't let me keep the job. So fuck you all. I'm gone. <laughs> yeah, I think so. He's going to go join some some lobbying firm. He's already he was the biggest fundraiser for Republican candidates already. Right. So uh, he has that skill and that Rolodex. So he's going to go to some lobbying firm and, and make billions, you know, just uh, and he loses the speakership and he gains a few million dollars, you know, a, a day uh, for doing it. So, yeah, I don't weep for Kevin McCarthy at all. But uh, uh, I think you're probably right. I mean, every day he's there is a humiliation, let's face it. You know, every day that they don't come to him for his approval on something is a humiliation. And um, you know that uh, Matt Gates is probably razzing him in the hall every day. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> and others, you know. You know so, uh, yeah, it's, it's a bitter pill for Kevin. And he deserves every moment. Uh, it sounds like... Uh... Kevin has a violent side, elbowing people, yeah, threatening to kick it. people's ass. Wow. He's a fuckhead. What I don't get is there there used to be rules of decorum that uh, that would uh, preclude a committee chairman from referring to someone else as a smurf, for example. Yeah. Um, uh, that they would be sanctioned for that. Or uh, challenging a, a labor representative to duke it out on the floor of the Senate. Uh, that used to be frowned on, uh, that sort of thing. And uh, you couldn't even actually, you know, you, it was always my honorable colleague or whatever, right. usually said, of course, with sarcasm. But but they said it, and they had to say it. They could not re refer to people that way. They couldn't call each other lunatics and smurfs and challenge each other to duels and all of that on in, in the Senate. I, I don't know where that went, but I think we need to get that back. I, I know part of it is the people. I mean, right. you, 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 you elect trash, you get trashy behavior. Right. It's it, the way it is. The House is more like a, uh, like a back road, country-ass roadhouse on a Saturday night at about 1 a.m. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's that yep. that fucking bad. These people are not the be finest or the smartest we have, and uh, their behavior is coming out. I mean, Lauren Boebert, Marjorie Taylor Greene, of course, Margie has the big book out. Apparently, it's not going well. Yeah. Nobody wants to buy that. Well, her people can't read. <laughs> well, they can't read or can't afford them. people can't read. No. Exactly. Mar Mar you know, Mar Margie's the I most... Thought... I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh uh, no, you go ahead. You're you're on the roll with Margie there. Well, Margie, Margie's probably the most fucked Republican in the House because the Democrats don't like her. Of course, the conservatives and the independent right. or more independent don't like her, and fucking MAGA doesn't even like her anymore. She's not long for that nah, seat because nah. she can't do anything. A one hopes, you yeah. know, I. I there's so many of the House Republicans, and for all I know, some of the Democrats, too, who don't really realize what their job is supposed to be. 
No. Um, they don't seem to be able to craft legislation or even have an idea of what legislation they could craft. I mean, I could give Diana Harshbarger a list of stuff to do for East Tennessee that would be uh, productive that she could spend a lot of time working on and probably, uh, you know, use some influence and get some stuff passed. But she, does she do that? No. All she does is second whatever Trump wants and, uh, you know, whatever, what, anything else she does, I don't know because she does not do legislation, which is her job. And uh, for all I know, she doesn't go to committee meetings or take votes either. She just kind of hangs around Washington and maybe goes to lunch or something. But she's not doing anything that she's supposed to be doing. When, when I've talked to Republicans prior to Donald Trump, it was common for them to say, well, I like gridlock. I like when nothing's happening. I like when uh, the yeah. government's not spending money. And that was the standpoint prior to Donald Trump. But now they've thrown in these culture wars and made it more adversarial with Democrats. We're not doing anything because we're too busy going after, um, you know, going after the uh, uh, abortion rights and all this stuff. They've, they've really gone down the rabbit hole and they aren't, uh, uh, they aren't doing well with it. They're, 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 they're losing ground every fucking day. They accomplish nothing. And that's going to work against them in 2024, too. I mean, over and above the abortion thing, all you have to say is, what did you do when you had the majority in the House? And they've accomplished zero. Exactly. What I want my representatives to be doing, I want them to demand weekly reports from the Pentagon on where the money's going. Uh, how that bomber you're building, how's that thing going? What did you do this week? Uh, where did that $400 billion you spent this year on that bomber, uh, why isn't it built yet? Why is it taking you 10 years to build a bomber? Yeah. And, and 400 times what you said it would cost. Why are you doing that? I want yeah. a report. Get in here and give me a report on that. Um, I want to know, uh, uh, you know, uh, why are you trying to stop people from voting in Georgia? I want I want people in here. I want a commission. I want federal intervention. I want to send federal marshals down to Georgia and find out what the fuck they're doing down there. Um, that's what I want my representative to be doing. Well, uh, not uh, not calling but, people idiots and smurfs. Right. Well, you know, and that's the thing is I never understood this with Republicans. They don't want them doing anything. They don't want them to uh, um, uh, spend any money because we pay too much in taxes. The way I look at it is I'm paying taxes regardless. No matter what happens, every year I'm paying taxes, all kinds of taxes. I'd like to see some return from that investment. Doing nothing is not good for me. I need something in return for the investments I'm making, and I don't understand why Republicans don't see it that way. It's all about the bottom line. Well, the bottom line to me is if I'm going to pay you X amount out of my income every year, I want to get something for it. Because if I'm not getting something for it, I want to quit paying you altogether. There's no point. Exactly. And then I want to I want my representative to say, hey, Tennessee, we sent you all of this money last year. And you were supposed to spend it on um, poor people's health care. Did you spend it? You did. You didn't spend it. What'd you do with it? It's just sitting there. We'll give it back. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're sending it back to California. <laughs> yeah, if you're not going to use it, it's not gonna just going to sit there. What you 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 did? What you built a volleyball stadium, Louisiana or Mississippi? You built you built a volleyball stadium with with that money we were supposed to you were supposed to feed poor kids with. You know, I want to see them accounting for every penny they send to these people, well, and I want to I want it to be used for what it's meant to be used for, or they give it back with interest. Well, yeah, I think we should get an accounting for all the money that's spent. I also think now that we've seen some of the people who have come to Congress, the Marjorie Taylor Greens, uh, the uh, um, Lauren Boeberts, the George Santos, even, even the guy from the Democratic Party, uh, Menendez. Um, yeah. I think all these problems we're seeing now we should have anybody going to the House of Representatives or the Senate vetted publicly. 
Democrat and Republican. Yeah. We need to know where they're getting their money, why they're getting that money, what their agendas might be, because it's real easy to put on a, a shiny face and a new suit and vote for somebody who says all the right words. But we're finding out now there's a lot of bullshit going on behind the scenes and has been for some time. And now that we know, shouldn't we kind of cleanse this out and make sure that the people coming in are, in fact, not dirty, not not criminals, that they are there for our representation specifically? Yeah, I mean, it seems to me that they, it should just be Derek Air that the FBI in, 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 uh, when I when I joined the army, um, I joined a program where I'd be dealing with uh, sensitive material. They spent a year investigating me, a year. Yeah, and they talked to a lot of people, and and everybody who was in my unit, same thing. People wondered what was going on. Why are all these people coming and asking me questions about this guy? Right. So I could get a top secret security clearance. Right. They should at least do that for for somebody who's a congressman who is routinely given access to classified material. Well, hell, if the average Joe these days gets a job washing dishes, he gets a full background check. If his credit is bad or yeah. he had some trouble or or he has a po he has a podcast called the Rational Boomer Podcast. They're gonna fucking look twice at you, motherfuckers. They're gonna look well, at everything. That's a hanging offense. <laughs> that's a hanging offense. But you can't tell me if you, George Santos steps up and the Republican Party goes, let's just Google that motherfucker. It wouldn't have been hard to vet him very quickly, <laughs> and then pull your support from him and get somebody more reasonable in there. Because all we've done is wasted a lot of time and money on dealing with George Santos. There's been no productivity from him. Nothing positive has been done in the House of Representatives, and he's been there for, what, a year, year and a half or something like that. That's a lot of money wasted unnecessarily if they just simply Googled the motherfucker. Yeah, I mean, he got paid and his staff got paid, and they right. should have to give that money back. Every yeah. one of them. Sorry. That's, absolutely. You, know, you were misrepresenting what you were doing. You know. <laughs> And the people that supported him, too. What were you talking about? Clay yeah. Higgins and uh, comparing him getting kicked out to the crucifixion? You should fucking take yep. that asshole with yep. money, too. What a piece of shit. Yeah, exactly. And Mike Johnson, Mike Johnson, Speaker of the House, goes, I'm against it because it, it was set a bad precedent. We'd have to throw out all of the assholes if we do that, which yeah. is essentially what he was saying. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Ed, we're going to wrap up the Rational Boomer podcast. I want to thank you for joining me today. It's always a pleasure. I know the people love hearing from you. That's all I get is responses from uh, people saying they love it when Ed comes on the show. So I appreciate can it. Can I throw in one more thing? Yes, yes, you can. Can I throw in one more thing? Absolutely. Okay. I've, I've been telling people for a long time that Tennessee is the test kitchen for fascism. Fascism. If they can do it here, they'll try it everywhere else, right? right. And um, my most recent TikTok, I talked about uh, uh, vouchers and uh, charter schools and all the other scams they use to uh, you know, suck money out of the public schools, right? Uh, you can go see it on TikTok if you want, and they're uh, um, holler troll. But I had no sooner posted that than Governor Bill Lee comes out yesterday and says, I'm I'm putting out. Uh, I want to do twenty thousand vouchers this year. Ten thousand of them go to low income kids and so forth. Uh, but we're going to put these out, and then they can use. They can get seven thousand dollars to use it for, you know, a charter school or homeschool or anything else you want to use it for, right? right? But that money comes out of the tax money that's supporting the public schools and. That he says 10,000 of them are going to these low income people. You find me, you find me a, a private school where you can get $7,000 tuition. And I'll send my kids there. I don't have any kids. No. But uh, this is the kind of thing I'm talking about. This is what I have to put up with every day. Every time I come up with something, they'll come back and make it worse. I just had to get that in there. Well, it's all performance and it's all bullshit and the typical. 
of the Republican Party. And while we're on it, let let's give you a proper uh, 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 a, a proper uh, bit of publicity. Tell people where they can find you. Uh, TikTok, Holler Troll, and that's at Holler Troll. Or you can find me under Reeling in the Years. That's R E A L I N apostrophe Reeling in the Years on uh, YouTube. Right. So definitely check out Ed. Ed's not talking politics quite as much, but uh, he's a great storyteller. Somewhat. He's a great storyteller. He's kind of he's kind of uh, uh, Paul Harvey esque, and we all love Paul Harvey back in the day. So give Ed a listen. I'm telling you right now. I appreciate if listen, it. If you're listening to this podcast, go to TikTok or YouTube. Subscribe to that motherfucker because uh, he's putting in a lot of work here and, and the wages are low here on the Rational Boomer podcast. <laughs> you said that. You, said, you got that right. <laughs> you got that right. You got that right. All right, Ed, thank you for, for uh, spending the time with us. Uh, for those of you listening, thank you for taking the time out of your day to listen. I hope you have a great day and uh, we will talk to you again tomorrow.